Can you lose massive amounts of weight eating cookies? A question deep in all of our hearts. <laughs> I am Amanda Rose, founder of Eat Like a Bear. I am down 140 pounds. Many of you see me running around eating meals much like this, but today I unpack the very important question about the cookie diet. <laughs> okay, so as here on YouTube, we review all of the diets we've all been on all of the years. This might be one of my favorites. What we love about it, maybe why we stayed fat. Those of you who know me, I'm gonna surprise you with my review of the cookie diet because I'm not gonna completely trash it. <laughs> I mean, if this isn't one of America's big fad diets, I don't know what is. If its name isn't sort of the most cartoon version of all weight loss programs, I don't know what is. But there's some very interesting things going on in the cookie diet that we should learn from. That in fact, perhaps I did learn from because I went on the cookie diet back in about 1982 when I was a very young teen. I will talk about my experience with the cookie diet how effective it was for me, why I continued with a struggle with obesity for many decades after, and how I landed up here, leading the Eat Like a Bear community down half my size with 170 people to date who have followed me and have lost over 100 pounds. But first, a bit of history. The Cookie Diet was founded in the 70s in Florida by Dr. Sanford Siegel. Dr. Siegel is a bariatric surgeon and saw lots of people over the years struggling with weight loss. And he recognized that a key barrier to weight loss was hunger. And don't we all know that to be true? The biggest struggle that I had all of those decades with my own weight was in fact hunger. He recognized that a combination of proteins really did help knock down that hunger and he wondered how could he get his patients to take protein. That's a little bit more of a common thing now to have like the formulized protein powder or something. But back then the question was, gosh, it's like getting someone to take their vitamins. How am I going to get my patients to do that sort of all the time? Well, what if you pack it in a cookie? Okay. So I think Sanford Siegel is pretty brilliant. And also let me point out props to Sanford Siegel. He was in the trenches treating actual people and patients. And so I guess, you know, the first batch of cookies he made in his own house, patients started trying them and it became a slow viral phenomenon in Florida in the 1970s. The cookies found their way to California to a, a young alas named Amanda Rose in about 1982. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but it had another wave of growing popularity in, you know, like 2005, something like that. Lots of people doing the diet, celebrities doing it. Two different weight loss success cases made the cover of People magazine. I mean, that's phenomenal. Really radical, impressive weight loss cases coming out of the cookie diet. That should have everybody's attention and we should give the cookie diet the cred that it deserves and not just completely laugh at something called the cookie diet, which I'm kind of laughing at, I am. I know we all kind of are. And also we all know so deeply that we've been rooting real hard for Dr. Siegel all these years. Wouldn't that be something? And yet America is still fat. And so what are we to learn from this? They're still having success, don't get me wrong. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about why this probably wasn't destined to work for me, why more than likely Eat Like a Bear's maintenance strategy is stronger, some of those factors. But let's talk a little bit about the diet in general, the philosophy, some of the really, really great, powerful things about Dr. Siegel's practice and his message. But we have some similarities between what we're doing and our message and his message. So I kind of feel like he's a brother, the brother eating cookies. <laughs> Okay, so first, what is the cookie diet? The current recommendation is to eat nine 60 calorie cookies a day, kind of spaced out and they have recommendations for how to space it. And then to have one like 500 calorie dinner, carefully kind of crafted, you know, something like chicken and broccoli, 500 calories. And so you have about 500 calories in that one dinner. And then you have 60 times nine calories scattered throughout the day, which puts you at just around 1,000 to 1,100 calories, which by the way, is exactly where we are in the calorie range. 
but there's an interesting difference, a couple of interesting differences. But his basic idea is this, you're gonna have one main meal, which isn't frankly very big, and you're gonna control your hunger throughout the day with these little hunger tools called the cookies. And so there's a special formula of protein baked right into the cookies that will help you with that lifelong struggle with hunger. This model leads to the first and main criticism of the cookie diet, which is essentially, it's too much about the cookie. And in terms of nutrient diversity and getting like all the nutrients that you need in your daily diet, one of the big criticisms against Dr. Siegel's cookie diet is that it does not have good nutrient diversity. And he says, you know, look, I mean, there's basically pretty good nutrients, I mean, in the cookies, but in that one meal and weigh it against the extreme benefit of actually losing weight because he is seeing really pretty impressive weight loss from the cookies. Okay, maybe let's not get overly nitpicky about the nutrient diversity for one year of eating when you are driving massive personal transformation and health factors and like bringing down your blood pressure, you know, reducing your cardiac risk, those sorts of things. And he says, look, so you're gonna move to a time in which you're sort of eating fewer cookies and you're eating more of the regular food. Okay, fair. I feel like that's actually pretty fair and, and weighed against the life of living at three, four, 500 pounds. I mean, what are we quibbling about? But related to this is an interesting argument that his weight loss is too rapid. And there's this notion out there that sort of safe and healthy weight loss is like a half a pound to one pound a week. Okay, so that's four pounds a month. That, that's about 50 pounds in a year. I lost 100 pounds in eight months. By comparison, mine was massively rapid compared to this recommended 50 pounds in a year. And, and Sanford Siegel's argument is that without real results, real rapid results, people will not stay motivated and focused on the diet. As the leader of the Eat Like a Bear community, I agree with this 100%. I'm a strong supporter of rapid implementation, rapid weight loss success, using that momentum to drive further success, to get to a life-changing weight so you can live your new life. You can live it, you can go out and experience the benefits of weight loss. I'll tell you what, you lose 100, 150, 200, 300 pounds. The difference between your current weight and that starting weight you fight for that. You fight for that more than you've ever fought for all the other stupid weight loss, for the 30 pounds here, for the 40 pounds there. You fight for that major life change. And that is what Sanford Siegel has been able to do in his practice. Hats off, hats off. So you'll see him in these interviews on these shows and they bring in their expert doctors who I see as kind of armchair, like these are the armchair like expert critics. And they're saying, I'm just concerned that this is way too fast and it's just not healthy. And again, completely missing the psychology of the importance of rapid weight loss. And then Sanford Siegel says, well, you know, I've had 500,000 patients. Your concern, it's over how many patients from your practice that you've treated for weight loss? <laughs> Really one of the big things I admire about the cookie diet and Dr. Siegel's role in the cookie diet is that it was developed in the context of real human beings, actual real human beings. In fact, back when the diet first came out, the cookie diet people were eating more like 800 calories a day. Now that's a real hard one to do. I, I've, you know, I've tried that, okay. It's real hard to stick with 800 calories. And I noticed, well, now it's more like 1,000 to 1,100 calories, which again is what we're doing. And we're doing it because personally, I've done the 800 and it's really, really hard to do over the long term. So I ended up doing more in the 1,000 to 1,200 calorie range. And I expect that over the years, as he got feedback from his own patients, he kind of adapted and tweaked it to make the best recommendation for his community. And that's why we see that change. And so that's not like a point of criticism too, like, oh, well, look, now he's saying this. He's saying that because that has worked better for his people. That's a plus, that's not a minus. And all the doctors who don't even work with patients 
or who like write like this best-selling weight loss book that's supposed to be a complete game changer for American society and have not tested it on even a one human being, not one, they're gonna run around and criticize a diet because it's called a cookie diet, okay? <laughs> But yeah, it's called a cookie diet and that is kind of humorous, okay? That point of it gets kind of a lot of criticism too, that it's essentially faddish, cultish, that it's, you know, just relying on all of us wanting to lose weight from cookies, which, you know, okay, a good part of that is actually true. We all would love this to work. We'd love it to work really, really hard. And so there's this point that there's no long-term sustainability in the cookie diet because it is sort of just a fad and that weight is just gonna pop right back on. Well, you know what? There is a huge risk with any diet that weight is gonna pop right back on because you go through that weight loss phase and then you just kind of feel like you're gonna just ratchet back into everything you were doing and surprise, the weight comes back on, okay? We all know it, we've all done it. And his isn't more susceptible to that than anybody else's just because it's cookies. But I do feel like the cookie aspect poses a bit of a problem because ideally we have sort of an amazing bridge between our weight loss phase and our maintenance phase wherein that weight loss phase is really training us, like putting us through a hardcore boot camp so that we're ready, ready for the rest of our lives. And what the cookie diet does is it, it, it does that to some degree because it says, okay, so you're gonna really bring those calories down to that 1000 calorie level. You're gonna just bust through the fat and like lose weight, go out and live your new life. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start eating a little bit more, maybe fewer cookies, more actual food. You might be able to bring your calories up just a little bit. And so people need to sort of find their own way with that. They're probably still eating some cookies, I imagine, is the education of the cookie diet. And just maybe fewer cookies, bringing in a little bit more, you know, lean, healthy food, etc. But let me briefly shine a couple of lights on the key things that are different for us in this community. I'll get, get to my little story about my 13 year old self on the cookie diet and make up some cookies for you. One of the key problems I see with the cookie diet is this idea that we're sort of eating all day long. So if you followed me at all, you know that a big game changing structural change for me in my eating in losing all the weight was shifting in the weight loss phase to a one meal a day model. And I know that sounds absolutely nuts and crazy. So hang with me because there's a lot to be learned in this and people are eating two meals and different things based on my story. There's lots of ways to adapt it, but let me just call out a key difference between what we're doing here at Eat Like a Bear and the cookie diet. And so those people who are like super strict and implementing a lot like I did, eat once, <laughs> once, <laughs> okay in 24 hours, as opposed to nine different times, eating nine cookies, 10 different times. So nine cookies plus a meal, 10 times in the day, something like that. You're eating all day long, all day long. What is this doing? You eat, your body produces insulin. You eat, insulin, eat, insulin, 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 all day long insulin. Those of us who are insulin resistant need to get our insulin levels down in order for our body to burn off our fat. The key way to bring your insulin level down besides lowering the actual like carbs in your food, because that's one strategy. And he does that by the way, so kudos. But a game changing flipping strategy is to eat once because you're only then producing insulin once and then you have all those other hours for your levels to come down, for your body to just live off its fat so you can get down to a life-changing weight. That is a huge difference between what we do and the implementation of the cookie diet. And so I do feel like eating these all through the day is clearly gonna work for some people. It clearly has, they have really great success. But for those of us with insulin resistance, the cookie diet is basically a pretty bad idea. A pretty bad idea, but absolutely, I can see why people have lost weight with this. However, another key point for our community is, as I mean, I freely admit that one reason I was at 280 pounds is because I'm a completely, excessive person. I mean, gosh darn it. I just really want to eat a lot of cookies. <laughs> I don't want to just eat one cookie. I want to eat a lot of cookies. And so that's why this giant meal appeals to my soul so well. I eat. I'm so happy with my eating because I'm like eating big, like my excessive heart. 
but then I draw the line and walk away. I go do like other excessive things out in my life, things that aren't gonna make me fat. So that's kind of been my approach. And so I wanna point out in the context of that psychology of embracing our excesses, it's important to note that bringing cookies into your life brings excess of cookies into your life. And that's so clear as I um, bake up these cookies. <laughs> I'm gonna bake these up for you. And there are a few common themes in it, but I want you to notice, first of all, I mean, I'm eating a lot of batter in that. <laughs> Tasting the cookies, I'm way over eating the cookies. If you do this and you implement the cookie diet, I really would just buy the cookie diet cookies. Don't get involved in making them. That engages you more in that cookie. We need less engagement in cookies, guys. Less engagement in our lives in cookies. Because I'm gonna tell you the key number one problem as I see it with the cookie diet is this. Let's boil it all down to this. We should all just forward the video to this. Guys, put it this way. You're gonna eat nine cookies a day, nine cookies. All through the day you're eating cookies. What are you thinking about? <laughs> you're thinking about cookies. Do you think thinking about cookies is your long game strategy for fighting obesity? It really isn't. It really isn't. And that is the real core problem. I mean, not only the sort of nine little meals a day, a core problem with the cookie diet is the extra focus on the cookie. The cookie, the cookie. When I was making these cookies, these aren't even that great, okay. All I'm thinking about now is making some chocolate chip cookies. I haven't made chocolate chip cookies in years, and now I'm here thinking about making chocolate chip cookies. One of the tenets of our psychology community engage is respecting time and space. The idea that the further you get in time from having tasted the cookie and, you know, the further you are in space, like, you know, the cookie's right here, so I'm going to want to eat it versus it's, you know, in the next county, so I'm not thinking about it as much. It's simply easier to make good decisions if you respect that boundary of time and space. And with the cookie diet, I find that it's very difficult to do that very thing. So in general, I'm saying since we have something working so well for the Eat Like a Bear community that can be done on food stamps, guys, <laughs> really, and is so highly accessible, why are you eating cookies? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, why are you eating cookies? The answer is because you want to, and I get it. <laughs> okay, I did make up this batch of cookies. Let's see how that went. Okay, first some wheat checks. <laughs> Man, I haven't even had wheat checks in my life in a long time. And see, talk about cookies making you want to have cookies. This makes me want to have cereal. I don't need to be eating cereal. The triggers. Cup of rolled oats. So, you know, I'm starting with the dry ingredients like you do in any classic cookie recipe. Three quarter cup of powdered milk. Quarter cup wheat bran, two tablespoons of cocoa, just the cocoa powder. Half teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon cinnamon. I'm deeply in the camp of why bother with a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Eh, going for a teaspoon, none of, none of this quarter teaspoon stuff. You get your dry stuff all mixed up, <laughs> just like a regular cookie recipe. Same old thing. And typically then the wet, you mix up in the mixer first, then you add the dry. So we'll do the wet now. Four tablespoons of butter, which is a half a cube, half a cup of sugar, one large banana, ripe and mushed, added to our creaming mixture. So we need seven egg whites, but we need two full eggs. We'll do those first. You get one, it's good. Dump it in. Dump it in while the getting's good. You know, with the separating eggs, man, you can end up with a lot of shell. Sometimes you'll get yolk in there. In this recipe, we don't, it's not like a, um, a meringue or something where you care as much about like, don't get any of the yolk in there. We don't really care. The yolk we're leaving out, I assume, because it adds calories and fat. And this is a high protein cookie. We want more of the protein, which egg white really shines for. And we got it. Mixing up the wet, adding the dry. I've ended up with something like this. I'm a little skeptical. You're supposed to let it sit for about five minutes. The flavor, it's not terrible. All of this once makes me want to make more cookies. Anything that makes you want to make more cookies, that's a real danger zone. Red zone, red alert. I'm just back here letting this sit and I'm eating the dough. There's over 2,000 calories in this low calorie cookie dough right here. I've already eaten for the day. I've probably eaten pretty close to my maintenance calories. So whatever I eat for this video could well make me fat. This approach is formulated to help you feel fuller and help fight hunger. But could you also eat all of this? I could, I could. I mean, let's be real. So this sort of approach takes a certain discipline. I can see how it would work for some people, but I can definitely see how people 
could eat too many cookies. This is looking like a super sticky cookie, guys. Gonna drop it. There's no way you're rolling or, you know, pressing any of this stuff. This is super, super wet. 2,400 calories in this whole bowl minus what I already ate. And really the problem of making them yourself is you are gonna kind of eat them or whatever. You're not gonna know exactly how many calories are in each cookie. So you end up with some measurement problems besides the point that this isn't the actual official cookie, so it may have its own problems that we don't know of. I think the biggest problem this approach has, this approach meaning making your own homemade cookies for the cookie diet, is you're really gonna wanna make all kinds of cookies. Yeah, you could get out and get the keto cookie recipes and all that, just eat all those. Those will make you fat too. 12 minutes, here they are. Oh my gosh, comes up nicely. Let's get Alistair in here to taste one. Hey Alistair, come taste some cookies. Right, yeah. Okay, now, thank you for appearing on the video in pajamas. I feel, <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't even admit what time of day this is. Uh, yeah, look at how delicious these look, Alistair. Don't think, what? It tastes like egg, that's what it is. It, it tastes like just nothing. Really? Okay, I haven't had one yet. Let me taste. Hey, 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 we're recording, come on in. Hey, so we have an exciting guest here today, mm. Rico. Yeah. Rico came back from college. Yeah, I thought, okay. He surprised us. So I we're, did. We're doing our big cookie diet thing. And I thought, how sad that Frederick's not gonna be in the video. And here he is. Okay, Alistair's already tasted it, but Rico, behold. Wow. The cookie diet cookie. <laughs> Your life may change in this moment. I doubt it. Cheers. Mm. It tastes like dried up whole grain bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I want to say again, this is not the legit cookie diet cookie. This is like the knockoff that you find recipes on the internet. Let me ask you guys this. Say you weigh 300 pounds and you're going to take a year to lose weight. Now, neither of you are into the vegetables either. So this is a really great comparison for you. And I want an honest I'd rather answer. eat vegetables. Okay, hold on. So I want an honest answer. Let me... Let me pose it for you. You spend a year mostly eating cookies with maybe one small meal, but that meal is not pizza. That meal is like, let's say, chicken and broccoli and a bunch of cookies. That's one universe, okay? okay. I like half of chicken and broccoli. Not, I, you like chicken. So he'd yeah. go on, the, this guy's gonna be a carnivore, but that's not That's not your, that's not the, you have two paths. You have the cookie path, the cookie path. Sadness path, great. Okay, and you have the big salad path. So Rico, you're in the big salad oh, path. Oh, definitely. Here, hold the big salad. Okay, you're in the big salad path. Alistair, I'm highly interested in your answer. So you're 300 pounds. You need to change your life. Big salad, instantly. What's that? Big salad. You're saying you're in the big salad? Yeah. Oh my, so all three of us, mm. like in family harmony, we're in the big salad path. Is, yeah. Half of this Those is actually cookies. good, unlike this. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> I hate it. Okay, now the official one, in my memory, it does actually taste better, but I think I still, even with a better tasting one, I would have a real hard, hard time going an entire bloody year. I mean, yeah. oh my gosh, so. And these are a disgrace to the cookie name. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, as we said, as these were coming out of the oven and I was overeating them, even though they tasted like crap, we're gonna go throw them down the ski slope. So yeah. You came just in time, Rico. Let's go do it. Right here. Oh. <laughs> ah. Ow! <laughs> God, you're getting strong, boy. <laughs> yeah, cookie down. <laughs> Very good. I did the cookie diet in about 1983. I was 14 years old. It went semi-viral through these communities. These cookies, they were you know, a little different shape and size back then, but it was the cookie diet and it was this idea of kind of like the meal replacement. I think it helped me from gaining more weight, you know, in those difficult teen years, but I don't remember having any real supervision and wisdom around me, you know, in terms of like parents and friends, in terms of, how to kind of implement the whole thing. And so this idea of having all the cookies and then having that meal, uh, I, I don't have a lot of memory about being extra mindful about what that meal would be 
or sort of about the whole picture of my eating. And I expect that's the way a lot of people are implementing the cookie diet, that they just sort of buy them and think they're just some kind of magic thing that happens. I, I don't think I thought they were magic, but just the idea that they weren't really part of a really thoughtful structure. And I, I, I'm sure that that is a core problem when they just have consumers buying it in the grocery store. And so that's not a fault of the diet plan, that's a fault of the implementation of the diet plan. We have that a lot in the Eat Like a Bear community. People who claim to be doing the three-day challenge, which is your free email series, which just teaches you the framework and it's very lockstep and, you know, print out the shopping list and follow the recipes. But then I see how people are implementing it. And I love in a way that people adapt it and, and, and hope that works for them. But I see a lot of people sort of adapting it maybe without maybe mindfulness that their adaptation is probably hurting their um, chances of success. And so there's always implementation problems. And I think I was an implementation problem case back in like 1982 for the cookie diet. That said, I can't imagine it really would have been sustainable for me. First of all, I didn't have a lot of coin as a teenager. So the idea of spending money on expensive cookies probably wasn't going to happen. The cookies have a bit of like a distinctive aftertaste, which you would be sort of tired of over a long period of time, making it difficult to implement, I think, in the long, long term. So that plus the, the money for me as a young teen were the barriers. But I think too that just the name, the cookie diet, sets up this psychology, this mindset that something sort of magical is going to happen and that this is like our fantasy diet because we get to eat cookies. And it kind of is, except in that fantasy world where we're just sort of in that cookie eating fantasy, have we really made the changes that we need to make in our whole life that's gonna drive that long-term weight loss success? For the most part, that's still gonna be a struggle for anyone, frankly, on any program. But I feel like that concept of the cookie fantasy makes it more of a challenge in this diet in implementing something for that long term. And that's where the criticism of it sort of faddish comes into play because it captures that popular culture concept that there's some kind of magic cure, which there isn't. And Sanford Siegel, I think, would agree with this completely. And frankly, it's probably been one of his big frustrations. But very clearly, people working more directly with a weight loss practitioner in the context of these cookies is probably having some decent success. Again, outside of the cases of insulin resistance and with that warning that you're now spending your life thinking about cookies, which I just feel like not a good long game strategy. I talk a lot about this in the engaged community. That's our psychology community at Eat Like a Bear. It's a member funded community. That's a very clear message for me is, is essentially the long game for all of us is to change the value we have for food. Like, let's put other things above food. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing as a culture if we did that? But we can start with ourselves. And my value for food, for cookies, has absolutely changed over time. That has made my life easier. It's simply easier to say no to those things that were making me fat. It's harder to say no to the whole class of cookies in the world. If you're living in the cookie world, the cookie diet has you living in that world. That's a core problem. But hats off to the wisdom that comes with this. Really, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by the success cases coming from the cookie diet. So respect, okay, respect. Find me in another review, all the different diets.